My name is Tony Visco. Um, I've been asked, or I was asked by the New England Water College Society to do one of the demos that are going on here. We've got three going on every Sunday, and then every other, that's uh, today, the 11th, the 18th, and the 25th. Uh, between those Sundays, there'll be gal gallery talks by a few, a couple of other, the artists. Uh, I'm a, I've been painting watercolor for quite some time, um, and, and I've gone through a number of transitions and stages from painting well, very tight, you know, very detailed and very exact, to, um, to loosening up a bit. And I, and I for me personally, uh, the fun part of this painting is, is to paint um, with a little bit of looseness and freshness. Uh, at least I hope it is. I, um, although I do quite a bit of detailed work as well. So, you know, I, I still haven't found what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I'm still struggling with that, and I don't know which, uh, which way we want to go. Um, normally, and I, I'm, just let me know if you can see this, because normally I would do, I don't know if I can do that. Does this, does this work for everybody, if I do this? Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is peel some of this off and put a, put a roll underneath that, just to give me a little bit of, a little bit of elevation, because and then I'm going to end up probably lifting this up and turning it into whatever, but we'll work it out. Well, is that good or not good? That's good? Good for everybody. All right. So I'm going to have to play around a little bit with this. Okay, so <coughs> watercolor. You guys are all watercolorists here? Okay, good. So some of you, some of you paint it with, uh, with a great deal, like I said, a great deal of detail and, and, and exactness when you, when you put this together. Forgive me, I gotta, don't want this to fall down. Um, and some of you don't, some of you guys are loose. And I, I mean, the representation around here is absolutely wonderful to see. What we're gonna do is normally, I'm, I'm working right now on uh, BF, BFK Reeves paper. It's a soft fibered paper. It's a print paper, actually. Um, I paint on all kinds of paper from Strathmore, Wat, Wat, Watman, Saunders, which is now Watman is now Saunders, um, to uh, Fabiano and uh, let's see, Ashes. Everybody, Ashes is sort of the big, big paper. And this paper is not as forgiving as Ashes because it's a soft fiber. So I tend to stay away from using mass, using resist, using anything that's going to, in, in, if I pull this tape off of here right now, it's going to pull the fibers up off of it. So I try to stay away from that. And what I also try to do, and I'm going to do this right now, uh, I'm going to just, if I take my water, we'll, we're going to sort of start this process and page down from the sky and go into the piece here. And I generally, I'm going to end up actually, I have the photograph, but I couldn't find it. Some of you saw me working from it. So I've got my, my little demo that I did, which I will just tape up here and use as a reference. Um, is that demo a, a small version of what you Yeah, this is going to, yeah. Basically, I'm going to be working on <laughs> something very similar to this. The actual image, if I could find it, if I can locate it, is just a, it's a dull, a very dull winter scene. You know, white building, uh, white barn, white, you know, it's just white against white. It's just not, not very good. But I thought it might be interesting to sort of brighten it up a bit and, and work on it. So I did a small piece here and uh, brought the photograph in. But again, I can't find the photograph. So, hey. So it's one of those things. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of start this process by wetting the paper, and if, you, if I get a little bit of roll, forgive me. Um, hey. How you doing? Good. Man who needs no introduction. Yeah, oh, did I introduce myself? I'm Tony Visco. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? Hey, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Tony Visco, yeah, right. Part of the New England Watercolor Society. Let's see, officially signature member of the New England Watercolor Society, I guess. Um, all right, so anyway, what I'm going to do basically is I'm taking the, my large brush because I am of the belief that the bigger the brush 
for large areas, the better. And as you guys all know, when you're doing this kind of stuff, the paper's going to sort of play around. It's going to bend. It's going to do whatever. A lot of times what I will do, by the way, when I'm doing this, is that if I'm working in the studio, I'll wet both sides of the paper. And I'll wet both sides of the paper because if I soak the top of the paper, it's going to just buckle toward you. And if you soak the bottom of the paper, it's going to try to pull the other way so it ends up flattening out. And I just generally don't even have to tape it. I can just leave it there. Uh, and then I'll, I'll work on that. But for the point of, from, the, from our perspective right now, um, we're just going to work with, we'll work with this and see where it goes. Because painting is always an adventure. Now, let me also say this, just in case this doesn't work out. I got a bunch of stuff that's back there in the portfolio that I took with me, to, <laughs> just to prove that, yes, I can do the work. <laughs> So just in case. But you never know, because demos, demos go, they have a habit of going wherever they want to go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some warmth into the sky. And I'm going to do that through, some, through the use of cadmium yellow. All right? and, and sort of give myself a general warmth. And I'm going to sort of run this off on both sides so that it cools up a bit as I go to one side or another. And I'm going to bring some of this actually color right down into the, this brightness right down into the piece itself. So let's go from there to maybe there with a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit, Tony, a little bit of red, not, not a lot, OK. And so we're just going to sort of give this a general feel and go from that to maybe a little bit of, a little bit of alizarin crimson and bring some of that in here and we'll go off into the other direction into the blues. I'm going to mix this with a little bit of my cobalt blue here and get a little bit of a little bit of a purplish color get to the cool side of this over here and bring that in. All right. And I'm going to try to keep this light. I'm not not always successful, but we'll see. Uh, picking up a little bit of my cerulean blue and I'm going to do the same thing. Come over here could have used a bigger brush on this but so what I'm trying to do here is get a gradation going of temperature a temperature range going in this because I'm a, I'm a very strong believer that temperature is an important part of a painting. Uh, and as a result, what I always try to do is to move this stuff from warm to cool and from light to dark. So value is a very important part of my uh, sort of repertoire when I'm painting as well as, um, as, well as temperature. Okay, so Based on what I've got going here right now, I need a little bit of the tissue. Let me pull some of this off. Top of the roof. So, and we're just going to sort of nice and easy bring this down. And that's going to be my background, uh, my background colors and, and wherever else this is going to go. Some of this stuff is going to filter in into some of this area where I'm doing the buildings and the silos and so forth and so on. Um, and as I said, normally what I would be doing is I would, in a lot of cases, if this is the sky I won't touch, other than the fact that every once in a while, you know, you can pick out clouds, obviously. I'm not going to do that in this, in this go round, but you can pick out clouds with the tissue and so forth. Um, so, okay, so what we've got right now is a sort of a movement in, in temperature going back and forth. Not really cool, cool, but we'll, we can help that along a little bit. Maybe bring some more over here into the, bring some more blue into this and add it in so that we have more of a cooler area as we come across. Um, so we've got some bright areas and so forth. Um, so the next stage of this game is, is where we're going to go with some of these buildings and uh, 
I normally what I would, I did, I sketched this all really roughly out off of this, I think, or something close to it, whatever. But um, what we want to do is sort of plan our, our work as we go along. And I'm going to build some buildings that are on this side cooler. If you, I mean, took a look at this, but I'll build some, some of the stuff on this side that's going to be a little cooler and the buildings on the other side a little warmer. Uh, so, that being said, let's, let's get into this, a little, a little bit of red and maybe a little bit of burnt sienna into this area right here. And the shed-like area here. And the top of this big area here. And this is just nothing, but all I'm really doing right now is playing around with shapes. Try to get some sh just interesting shapes in here to give me a, a general feeling of where I want to go. So I'm working on just a balance. And I've got my silos back here. Considering this is a barn, or building with a barn on it. And if I can think about this area a little bit, we need a shadowy side. And usually what will happen, happen here is I'll let this just go wherever it wants to go. Um, I don't want to paint it. I, you know, I, I, teach, I teach this stuff, and what I try to tell people is, is that if you don't fight the watercolor, if you don't fight the effort, Watercolor has a wonderful spontaneity to it, and it'll, it'll really paint itself if you allow it to paint itself uh, and, and create an ambiance and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an impact that you couldn't probably do if you tried to do it all in fine detail using you know, glazing and layering and so forth. I think that, that you can do what this would normally be would be an underpainting for a lot of, in a lot of cases for a lot of people. And then you can build on top of that once it dries. Once it dries to the point where you can, even if it's moist, even if it's, uh, you know, the, the, the paper is not dry, but the, a little bit moist, you can start to charge in some pigment in areas and control the flow of those pigments. I had a, you know, I, I started out in this business, like I said, with when I first learned to paint, um, I, took, I took lessons from a wet and wet watercolorist and after four years, decided I was going to go into another business, and I did. So it's, a, it's not an easy uh, process to learn, but once you get it, once you do, it, it, it's, you know, it, it, come, it comes alive. There's a lot you can do with it. So hopefully this will, this will work out. So we got a shadow you know, coming across the side here and the side over here. Light's coming from this direction. Um, we want to get into putting in some soft tones into a, a building that's generally white. So we're just going to use the same sort of same sort of tonal value. to try to do something with this. And we've got more shadow probably on this side here and in this building. So maybe we want to come in with a little bit stronger blue, blue purple to help this along a little bit. And 
the shadow is going to play off of this. And I'm going to leave this all. We'll work out something later on when it, when it comes up. Got a little bit of run here, which, you know, I guess it wanted to do it. So we'll just take advantage of it and let it do what it wants to do and see where it goes. Now, uh, this, this is a little bit, this is going to be a little bit different in that under my lights at home, I usually don't sweat. <laughs> so, so we've got all this kind of stuff that we can the heat and everything. This is going to dry a little faster, I think, than I'm, I'm used to. But we should be able to do, we should be able to get it done with, with a reasonable amount of time. Um, I am a believer in using... Uh, 100%, you know, natural fiber hairs, Klonsky sables. Um, I, my flat brushes aren't. My flat brushes are synthetic because I don't think that that makes much of a difference from a, from a point of view of when, you, when you're just putting all of this good stuff in. And my, so my large, my large flat brushes are generally synthetics. I carry, you know, I carry stuff like this, which is squirrel. Again, squirrel and so forth. So, um, but in general, uh, I tried to use as much natural hairbrush as possible. Uh, so we got, uh, hang on for just a, oh yeah. So I don't put my fingers in it or my hands in it. So, okay, so here's, so we start to look at where we want to go with this, the shapes of these buildings. And what I'm going to just do is get a little bit more Um, start to build up my values a little bit here and there. Start getting some shape in here. I have a bad habit of laying my, my hand in paintings a lot of times. No, oh, it's brutal. I know. It's just absolutely amazing. I mean, if you leave this dry first and you do that from left, you know, if, if you paint from right to left, you're always going to, if I'm a right-handed person, there's always going to be a problem with this. So, without rolling off the table here, So we've got some shadow underneath this. And this is just general, the general process that I will usually take, just build it up. something down here in this area here so I've got light coming down the roof I'm going to probably leave mostly white uh, let's come in here and give myself a chimney So again, it's about shapes right now, and I've got these trees that are going to come in here at some point, but I'm going to do those on top of uh, the piece when, I'm, when I have it pretty much all the way I, where I want it. So we have, we put, let's see, I'm gonna, let me just drop a, Drop a building back there. And back there. Maybe. Just want, I want to sort of define this. I'm going to leave this sort of area right here white. So I want to sort of define, define around it a little bit. Um,
Okay. So, next step. So as buildings, you want to sort of just bring out the characteristic shapes of the buildings a little bit, a few windows here and there. Uh, I'm not interested right now in doing any fine detail on any of this stuff. I just want to get some general light values in here, just to get in some warm and cool values in here, uh, warm and cool temperature in here, just to give it, give it a feel for where, where hopefully this will go. And what I'm really doing now is just going to start to, again, slowly try to build some of these buildings and this, the shapes of these up a little bit more. I think I have a little bit too much. Let's see what happens. Little shadow there, a little shadow here. Um, okay, so we'll let that just set up a bit. We're going to come, come in and start to do, again, a little bit more, get a little bit more detailed, in some of this area. Trying to keep it fresh and loose. And we have a chimney. Let's just put, let's just say we got a shadow on that side. You notice that I'm basically using, I happen to, uh, I like the, the, the alizarin crimson. I have, I have like a permanent, uh, permanent rose or, or color over here and the blues and yellows, I mean the blues and, and reds make for wonderful vibrant purples and so forth. So I try sometimes to work with those and make it become sort of very interesting. And then what I'll do, is take a little bit of my, my reds or my browns, especially burnt, my burnt sienna, and then mix it in there and give it a little bit more of this warmer brown in here. And it helps, it just helps to create a liveliness of the piece that I think works for me for when I'm painting. And all I'm really trying to do here is to build some docks so that they stand off here. Um, we'll, and then we'll sort of pull all of this stuff together, but I gotta wait till this stuff all dries. Actually, what I probably should do, <clears throat> excuse me for a second, let me just pull out a, 
dry, I was going to say a dryer, but just help this along a bit. What generally would happen, see, at home, when I'm doing this stuff, I just let it dry. I don't use this. I'll just walk away from it and go have a cup of coffee or something and come back to the painting. And it also gives me an opportunity when I do that to see this a little bit with a fresh eye. So let's continue, if I will. So I'm going to deal with a little bit more pigment, less water, and start to build this up a little bit. If you guys have any questions, while I'm doing this stuff, feel free, because I'll just, you know, silence is, is sometimes golden, but sometimes not. And I'm more than happy to talk to you about what I'm doing or what I'm making an attempt to do here and there. Um, right now what I'm doing is I want to try and throw in some warms and cools in this to give it some more character. Changing this up here and there. Let's go back to doing. Okay, the underside of that shed. So it's a matter of simple statements here, um, just basic shapes to try to give you the general uh, characteristic shape of the buildings that we're dealing with and, and, the, uh, and the shapes of the buildings uh, to, to give, give you a feel of compositional movement because that's also very important from my perspective. Uh, it's, it's always a good idea to sort of try to get this stuff so that it works, it flows well. And uh, some of this stuff is going to be very, I'm going to end up probably putting some strong reds in here and so forth at, at some point. But I'm just trying to give, give you a, a general feeling of where this stuff is going. You guys do demos, by the way? Anybody here do demos? You won't? Yeah? No? It's always interesting because you never know where they're going to go. Can you talk a little bit about your process of how you went from being detailed to loose? 
Um, it came about because I started to take a look at a lot of the loose work that's on the market. And actually, it really came about by my very first, the very first guy that I ever worked with, who was a, a wet and wet watercolorist. I just could never capture it. I mean, I'm, I'm saying basically that he would do, he would just saturate the paper and let it get dry to a point, and then he would do this wonderful swirl and another wonderful swirl and a couple of things, and all of a sudden the Sistine Chapel would be there, and it just. <laughs> And it was just, it was magnificent to me. It was just absolutely incredible to see the type of control. But that was all about, and this is, it's no different than this. It's all about the control of the amount of water, the amount of pigment, and the moisture of the paper. Because what ends up happening here is, is that the paper becomes a sponge once damp. The brush is a sponge once damp. A sponge is a sponge once damp. And it's a matter of moving that pigment to brush, taking enough water out of the brush to put it down. So I thought, Geez, that's an end from my years of working, working with value, uh, you know, working with going from light to dark, which is an important part of keeping interest in a painting, going from one color to another color, which is very important in a painting from my perspective, and uh, in, in temperature, going from warm to cool. All of those are, are play key effort, and I, I think it's easy, more easily controlled uh, with a looser with looser work, and looser work for me is a little bit fresher. Um, you know, there's not it, it, there's there's not. I mean, it, it's very interesting to paint, e emulate something that you're seeing exactly. But then there's a point where I, for me, I started to say, well, I can copy it. That's terrific, wonderful. But is there more to painting than that? And yes, I remember this guy and how he used to accomplish magnificent paintings being very loose. And what happened was is that I just decided that that's the direction that I wanted to go in. So you'll see a lot of the stuff that I have over there in the portfolio is just generally this kind of work. It's just a very uh, free flowing work. It's not as loose as some. Some people, are, I mean, well, where's Noriega's? I mean, you got, there's a piece that's up here that's absolutely magnificent on the wall, and it's super, super loose. I mean, Mary's piece right here, for instance, uh, of, the, uh, of it, the Italian piece that's in the center is extremely loose in the way she paints that. Uh, you know, this stuff on the right-hand side, these are all you know, beautifully done and well-executed pieces. But there's a looseness and a freshness to a lot of this stuff. And, and and I marvel, I absolutely marvel at a person that is, that's able to do, I mean, those shoes, I mean, those sneakers over there, for example. I mean, it, it's just incredible to see the detail in that stuff. But I'm also of mindset that I don't like to spend 20 hours painting a watercolor. I mean, I, you know, I, I like to get in and out in a couple of hours. And, and if I can do, I can't do that if I, if I am super detailed. And it took me, I mean, it used to take me, sometimes it would take me 10 hours or 20 hours to do a piece if I'm going to do a real detailed, layered, glazed piece. I've spent as much as 30 hours on a piece doing it. You know, and it's a slow build. It's like trying to do every feather on a duck. I mean, you know, it's just, I mean, you can either do the whole thing and just put some indication of feather, or you can go in and do every damn detail of every feather. And you have to sit down and say, you know, is it, is it worth it? And, and yes, for a lot of people it is. But for me, uh, so I just evolved. It was a slow evolution. I'm, and it was a slow evolution over time because I'm amazed to see the palette that I used 10 years ago versus the palette I use today. And it came about without any effort. I mean, it's just, it was just a natural gradation into it, into, uh, into uh, the process was natural. It wasn't forced. It's just that I lost. Uh, I used to paint in monochromatic colors. I used to paint in harmonious colors, but they were all pastel in terms of its approach. And I still do from time to time. I shouldn't, I mean, that, that, I, I do it on a regular basis. I got a piece that's hanging up there in the other room that's more of an older styled piece. Uh, not that the piece was old, but I painted it more like that, more detail. But I find that when you're doing demos and when you're doing something, you have to do it one, one of two ways. Either if I'm a detail painter, I'm only going to do a small portion of any painting that I'm doing to show you how do I get to that point. Or I'm going to try to get a painting out. And I just chose to do it this way. It, that, that's basically all. I'm... And as I said, you know, it, it's funny because 
this now is, is, you know, this is lightening up. You know, watercolor will just lighten up and lighten up, and, and it just kind of becomes a nice sort of background to this whole thing that's going on. And as, I dry, as this stuff dries, yeah, sure, look at this. Sure, throw it around, see? Well, that's going to be one of those magical things that are, we're either going to keep or not keep. I don't know. We'll see what happens. God. I, had, I took, a, cl I took a, a workshop with somebody that said, listen, if it happens, watercolor was meant to go that way. Leave it there and just work around it. I said, okay, well, okay, we'll do it. Okay, so, let's, so we're going back to tr trying again to build some of this up uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, I have a roof here. These, these, this home is... This sort of thing is buried down in the valley. Do you ever mask your whites, or do you just never uh, stay away from the? Areas? Stay away from them. I, I, I stay away from them. I, I'm not saying never. I, I, in the beginning, when I first started to paint, I would work with mass resist. If, in, in watercolor, there's, there's a couple of things. We can either be a purist in, in, in a, as, as a pure transparent media. And, um, and masking is OK there, too. It's, it's interesting. Transparent Watercolor Society allows masking, but they don't allow you to put white, white in on top of anything. If you can't use it as an opaque media. And I say, well, if you're going to go through the trouble of masking something out, leaving the whites, go back and feather those edges after you list the resist, that's a lot of work. Why can't I put white on top of it and just, just you know? So uh, it's just a decision that I made. I'm, I'm not comfortable with mask. And to be honest with you, if I used mask on this paper here, I'd be tearing the fibers up on the paper. I can't. Ashes is the only paper that I find. Well, maybe this, a, a few others, but Ashes is hard enough. It's a durable surface. It's, 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 you know, you can do anything with it. So it will take a resist with no problem, and you, you'll be able to lift it. But a lot of papers, you know, I've worked with soft Fabriano papers, and, and, and if it's not a hard paper, it's not going to work. <laughs> So, and I've ruined, I've ruined papers that way. So I just said, well, you know, in that case, it's just not going to happen. So I, I go back and leave the white, leave the white wherever it's going to be. And all of this stuff here, you'll, you, what will end up happening here is I'll, I'm going to fill this in a, in a bit, but I want to get some of this stuff detailed back here a little bit more. Um, but generally speaking, it's, it's just a buildup of tones for me. And uh, again, depending on my approach, if, if I were going to do a different kind of painting, I would have been charging you know, letting it damp enough and then just charging a lot of pigment in. But with working in here, I can't do that because it's going to dry too quickly under these lights. So I just chose this. Anyway, um, yeah, it's, it just, it's a process, and it's sort of a decision that I had to make. So for me, I'll paint it. And if I need to bring out some whites, I will just use a little bit of opaque wa watercolor uh, or actually, or gauche. It doesn't make any difference. It's all the same. You know, it, the only difference is that it's a lot more filler in the gauche than, than there is in the, in the watercolor. I can't get, it's also interesting because sometimes I'll go back and I'll use, and you probably have used it, color pencil to go back and do some of the real strong linear work because with a brush, you have to be a mag magician to control that nice straight line kind of stuff that goes down. So you have to work at it over and over again. Um, so I'll work with any tool. I'm just a believer in using any tools available. Uh, I've painted with my thumb and my hand and my you know, credit cards, whatever. If you're gonna, actually, credit cards right now would be the best way to, for me to do these straight lines that I'm going to do after it dries, because it'll give you a nice, strong, rigid edge. So I, I, you know, I, work with, I work with whatever's available. And, uh, and I just have fun with it. 
quite frankly. It's just, it, for me, it's just a, it's a medium to, have, to enjoy and have a lot of fun working with. You've got to have a passion for this medium, or else it's just not worth even going into. I mean, you can paint with an oil. You can do oil painting a hell of a lot faster, easier, much more you know, controlled, and, and you don't have to worry about leaving the whites. You don't have to worry. You, know, you can paint on top of it. And you can paint opaquely. I mean, I painted opaquely for years uh, in, the, in the commercial industry because I, I grew up doing that stuff. I've been a commercial artist and, and a professional artist for years just working commercially, and I worked with designer colors all my life, doing, you know, I'd box designs or whatever. It was all working with gauche, actually, the whole thing. And, and uh, so the transition for me is, is more interesting in that I, would, I, like the idea of, um, I like the idea of working with watercolor. I like the fluidity of watercolor. I like what it can do. And it, it, creates, it creates for me sort of an exciting opportunity that um, only watercolor will give you. And this, this process right now, I mean, I, you know, I'm, it's dry enough so I can put my hand down here and not, not worry about too, it too much. You know, building up, the sh building up the shadows here, but not getting, I'm not getting so super detailed that I'm having to concern myself overly with them. I just want to get some stuff in here to let you understand that the light's coming from this side. That's all. And it's just all, all that's really important to me. Um, and then I'm going to go over this. You, you, you'll see what happens. I'm going to go over this and soften us all in a, in a bit. Um, Okay, so I've got, I've got my house basically in there, or my building in here, and I do have, there is shadow on this side. So it's coming, I mean, you've got a tree here, so it's got to be doing, we've got trees in the other area, so you have to probably have some shadow coming down on that area. And you have probably something going on in here too, because the difference is, Um, and I have, this is not as well defined as I would like, but we've got something happening here in this building. Got a building behind here. Let's change the roof up a little bit so you can see it. And this is just a, this is the general work process that I go through when I do these things. Uh, so I've got the background, and this is a it's more light than dark. I mean, we obviously can see that. This, I'm not doing a lot of heavy uh, pigment in here right now. Just the accents are going to be a little darker. These will dry, and I'll build up a little bit more darkness in this stuff. But what we're trying to do is to just build. I'm going to throw in a nice dark tree here and probably some branches in this area and maybe a dock tree over here and I'll, I'll make this all come about at some point. Um, but again, at the process for me is just doing this stuff, looking at it, walking away, come back, take a look at it. I'm, I don't know about any of you guys, but for me, um, I can never see, I can never finish. I've never been able to finish a painting. I mean, what I see, my mind is, my mind is saying, this is, this is the correct direction. But you know, it's like putting a mirror up. When you get away from it and you come back in a half an hour, you look and you say, wow, that's not where I really I wanted to go. Or, so it's important for me to sort of step away from paintings when I'm painting and then come back to them. Uh, because you never, for me, you never see them as they should be finished. 
I brought a piece into my class the other day that I thought was, wow, wasn't it great, terrific. And she said, but how come that's that way? And somebody else says, but how come this is, and I, you know, I didn't see it. I, I, I couldn't see it myself until it gets pointed out. But I think we all experience that kind of stuff. Everybody goes through that. So when you go back in and work on it later, uh, is it dry and you add water to mm -hmm. the paper? Yeah. Um, well, there's two things that are going to happen. I'll bring this to the point right now, up to the point right now where I'll let it dry, and then I'll just probably throw some, I'll do what I call calligraphy, that real heavy dark sort of brush work to bring uh, some really strong darks out. Uh, and that really, that's what pulls everything together. It's not all of this stuff. I mean, this is all the background stuff that goes on. Uh, and I've always believed that whether you paint tight or whether you paint loose, if you can lay this stuff in real quick, and you can get it done with the big brushes and get it, get it to the point where you want it, detail later is always much better because 90% of the piece is done or 80% of the piece is done. So, you know, if I want to really go back and tighten this up and tighten that up and put the little wires in, and, and which I'll, you know, we'll probably do some of that here. Um, but I've got only a short amount of time to be able to get this done and I'm supposed to talk to you without, you know, the, the, it's just not like I can paint. I'm talking to you as well, so. So you always do the I have, darkest last. I always what? The, the darkest. Absolutely. For me, I, and I wouldn't have put, unless I knew that this was going to be a very strong dark area, and then, yeah, I would put it in. But my mind will, I can see it better building it up to, to the dark. It just, just helps me a little bit more. So for me, yes, that's the, my approach to this, is that I would put the dark in later. But I will show you, I mean, I'm going to do right now, this is, hopefully dry enough and it, that I can, I can sort of put, I can put this tree in right now and, um, and I'm, what I'll do is I'll take some water and the way I'll handle it, I'm gonna, I'll put this dark in just so that, because this is a demo and it really makes no difference, but just to show you the process that I would, uh, I would normally be working. So my tree in the foreground is gonna, I'm gonna wet it first and I'm gonna wet basically just the key branches here. That's all I'm going to do. And what I'm going to also do is then come in here, and I've got to sort of make a decision because usually what happens is that there's, you know, when you're dealing with a tree with a lot of canopy, you've got a lot of leaves on it, all that underside is dark. So that, so that normally what would end up happening is, is that everything, everything up here in this area here, for instance, would be super, it would be a lot darker, all right? And as it comes down, and I just went off the thing a little bit, but as it comes down, it'll lighten up a bit. We're going to make this tree fatter than I wanted, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Now, see how this stuff is it's still a little bit wet, and it's going to start spreading all over the place. I, I don't necessarily want that, but I'm going to leave it alone because, because it's a tree, I'll pull branches out of that later and stuff like that. I'm not too worried. I don't... I don't worry about that stuff. I try not to worry about that stuff. It, get, it can get out of hand. But I'm, right now what I'm doing is I'm getting warmer as I get to the bottom of this, right down here by where the snow is going to be. And, and so this is my main, my main trunk. And off that main trunk, if I take and I just pull from the color in here without just using clear water, if I just take and pull from here rather than add anything, what I can do is start to build my branch, my branch structure as to where I want it to go. And as you can see, it's, I'm building it lightly. Because for, when, I, when I see trees, I see a lot of light filtering through the trees. And I, I, I've always had a problem with a tree being the same value all the way up the trunk, the same value all the way up each branch. It just, it, I struggle with it. Because that's not what life is all about. You know, you, you get a lot of filtering of light that comes through trees. So branches, you, some of the branches you can't see, some of them you can. And what's interesting is that this tool here, is, it's, I mean, it's a tool for clouds, it's a tool for rocks, it's a tool for anything. And, you know, just doing something like that and pulling out the color will give me that box shape that I need. Or, you know, dropping, I mean, you, I don't know if you can see that, but just doing something like that gives you light and dark areas that help to create the illusion of bark on the tree. And that's what all of this stuff is for me, is an illusion. I mean, if you think about what, what we are as just 
magicians, I guess. You know, we create this sort of illusion that, that that's really a painting of some buildings in the background. But, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a, the step is, I mean, I've always, I've always looked at this stuff as being characteristic shapes of trees rather than the detail of a tree, uh, the characteristic shape of the buildings as opposed to a detailed drawing of a building. But that being said, you still have to have some semblance of how this stuff works. And characteristically, doing branches off of a tree, for me, is that I don't want to come off at right angles, and I don't want to come off. I want to juxtapose these so that they're, they look realistic in life, as opposed to, you know, I mean, we've all done this tree, and branch comes off this way, and a branch comes off this way. And it's even, it just doesn't look like it's, it should. So whether you're doing deciduous trees or palm trees or, or you know, it, it, whatever, it, it doesn't make any difference. They all have a characteristic. And I just found that coming off, like on this situation here, coming off at, let's say, a 30 degree angle or a 60 degree angle, something that's not just this way, straight off. Also, and you just saw me do this, I just put in a little bit of nice warm color here against this stuff over here. Um, and I'll do a little bit of dark against light. And I'll, you know, you'll see me do. Stuff like this. And. If you take a look at the characteristic of that shape, for instance, coming down here, when I build a tree or branch off a tree, usually I'll leave a stub at the end of the, where the branch is going to break off and go to another direction because it helps create that illusion that it's, it's a little bit more realistic. Uh, you know, tree branches and limbs are breaking all the time, so it just helps that out a little bit more. And also what I also do is I'll come over here and I'll just build I'll make every time you branch off, for instance, if you just come in here and you put a darker here, I'll give you an example. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make this a little darker. Well, that means that that branch is not coming off the side of the tree. It's coming off the front of the tree. All right. It helps again because branches just don't come off. They don't come off the sides only. They're all over the place. And also doing this allows it to granulate into the existing, because this is already wet, so it'll granulate in there and it'll dissipate in there. And what ends up happening is you form this nice flow from whatever's happening over here into the branch. It becomes more realistic. As opposed to, for instance, the hard shadows that are going on under these, this here. This stuff here, when, when you have a branch that comes off the front or the back side or whatever, if, it, if one flows from one to another, it just... It helps me create the illusion for you as an audience that it's a little bit more realistic. If that helps you understand where I go with all of this stuff. So, um, you know, it's a building curve. It's, it's, a, it's a building block, I suppose. And I'll take this branch here, for instance, and bring it in the front. And if you're going to have a branch come at you, that's the other interesting thing is you've got some foreshortening to play around with in terms of doing that. So I could probably bring this branch that I started here, leave that light and, and sort of come into the front area and down and just... So you've got all this sort of wonderful stuff that's going on that, that just breaks everything up. And I'll, throw some, I'll do some more work on this in a minute. Uh, I just want to get back here to do a little bit more, help get this thing a little bit more to where I want to go with it. Just feather, feather this out a little bit. Now I'm getting too dark, I think. I don't know. OK, so a little bit of shadow again under here. A 
We'll build this up a little bit. This a little bit here helps that helps bring that out a bit more. And I think I'm going to do some real, let's see. I need to define this a little bit more because I'm getting lost in here, it seems. Tell you what, let's do it this way. Let's get a little bit of stuff going on over here. I've got a roof over here that's overlapping, so in order for me to pull that out, I need to get behind here and throw some, some shadow in here. And this is what, I guess this is where we differentiate between the photograph that I had, which I can't find, <laughs> that I was going by. Um, because this was white into white and it was very hard to see, very hard to distinguish. And if you think in terms of also this, you've got a chimney with a shadow that's gotta come down here at some point, somehow. And I'll, I'll actually probably play around with building this up a little bit more here. Um, and I suppose the same thing could be said for what's going on back here because you've got light coming in here so maybe we can even even take a little bit of warmer color and define this roof a little bit more All right, so that helps to bring that out a little bit more So I've got cool to warm and and what and where do I go from here? What's next? <laughs> um, let me do this. Let's get some really strong. You know what? Here's my flat. Let me get a thin flat brush over here. Let's get some, what do I want some stronger color? How about this? Let's get some real, get that popping a little bit more there. There you go. All right, so this doesn't pop so much, but that does. Helps a little bit of movement. Um, I don't know what I did here. I can't, lost my way. Well, let's do this. I'm fudging it now because I just. Totally lost what I was going with this thing. But we'll do something like that to just do some shapes. Uh, so we got a little bit of strong red in it. Look at this, look at this. See, too much water. That's the lesson that we all learn. Amount of water in the brush, amount of pigment in the brush, the dampness of the paper, all comes to play. Okay, that help, can you see that? Does that popping it out a little bit more? I, hopefully it is. I'm gonna end up having to go in here and play around with this stuff here a little bit. Um, I gotta let that dry a bit over here. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna come in here and, and do, let's get this large brush. Let's get something down. 
because this is So this is so I wet this up. I'm going to leave some of the white in the background, and I'm going to sort of just flow some color in here. just allow it to do whatever it wants to do. And hopefully some of this will pull together. And we'll anchor that tree too, because that's one of the things that I don't want to leave. So it's, you don't want to just stick it in the ground. You need to get that sort of spread out a bit so that it, it, it looks more realistic and it's anchored. And we're going to darken that up a bit. Sorry for my squeaking here. I apologize for that. Okay. We've got sort of an, whether these shapes are accurate or not, we've got to have to go back in there a little bit and, and define them a little bit more. But um, what I'm trying to do, somebody asked me about that granulation. Somebody asked me about one of the paintings I had back there, that granulation. See what's happening right here? It's the same kind of paper. It's just, it's, it's doing it. It's, if you just leave it alone, it'll, it'll do it its own thing. And it'll, it'll automatically... Um, Create a nice painting. Hopefully, it's some you know, a might nice part of that painting. Um, so I would go then now and start to look at getting into some real darks to help pop these things out a little bit more. Help to do something over here. Get back into this area here where this dark, you know, this area for instance up here is make it start to build some. Uh, of the texture on this tree. And I'll put some Okay, so you can now, in interesting, like, interesting what I just did. I got the light coming from this side, right guys? Guess what I just did? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But that's okay. As an artist, you're perfectly free to do whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah, well, all right, we'll put it down here. <laughs> here you go. We'll force the issue. Anyway, it's a build. All right, now we'll start to see a little bit more darkness in that tree. I'm going to put some back, I'm going to put a tree back here too to help to get, create the illusion. All right. Um, let's say we got. Let's start to build in this area. Leave that alone. I'll get a, I'll get some more stuff going on here in a minute. Along with that, maybe. A... Yeah. 
to others. Okay, there's a method, I mean, now you guys notice what I just did is this is a little darker, this is a little lighter because they're, you know, you got these, they're not always, they can't be always the same value. It's just, you, if you do that, you're going to end up in trouble. What did I do here? Well, I have no idea what I did there. But the same way with this, if we, if we put some of these fine, fine lines, and some of them are going to be thicker than others, some of them are going to be thick, thinner than others. But if we sort of do this, we can create an ambiance. We can create this light dark kind of effect, dark, you know, going back. And I will use, that's why I like, I like these, because what ends up happening is, is that, you know, with, you can always do something really fine with a good point. And you don't need to go necessarily to a small brush. Although, I will do, I will do work with a, with a rigger like this, which a script brush like this, which is nice because this is where you can create a little bit of this stuff. And dragging this brush, you know those dark skips that create some interesting kind of things that happen here and there. Nice, fine lines, because again, I found that it's interesting what happens with trees is that you get this nice big heavy trunk that goes up and then you get another branch that comes off that's a little thinner, then you get another limb that comes off that's a little thinner and you get all of these nice twigs that go on. And you know, so you've got to get finer as you go up there and lighter, it, it just. So again, this is more about the process of painting, whether or not the process that I use. I'm trying to cre create this nice fine pigment. And you're gonna see me do, because trees are not, tree, you know, it's interesting. What, what color is this or what color is that? There's no such thing. I mean, you can do, you can do the, anything in any color. As long as it's convincing, I guess. So, now you can prove me wrong, I guess, so. But creating a little bit of warm and cool thing that's going on here. This is all the fine stuff that's going on in the background. And this is where I would spend, I would spend some major time playing around with just these nice fine lines that go on. And that's the other thing that I find very interesting is that when people structure and they do trees, I find my, you know, I, when I'm teaching that my students will do this stuff and they'll always give me a soldier standing very still saying, I'm a tree, you know. <laughs> they, they move, they break, they, they bend, they do all kinds of stuff. So get, get used to doing that. Try to get more interesting characteristic shapes when you're doing this stuff. All right. And I find that that's still a little bit wet. I'm testing this stuff because I'm trying to find out whether or not it's dry enough for me to really go in and do anything uh, more to it. Uh, right, that should be okay. I want this a little darker over here. All right, and what did I say when, it, when we were talking a little earlier? I said, I'm gonna come in here and every time I come off, I want to come off this limb, that limb, that limb. Now tell, just see if you can under, see what I'm going with this stuff. I got one here coming over here, a little darker. 
I'm going to come off there with a little bit. So, so what I'm doing is I'm spotting this here and there where the trees, where the limbs come together. And I'm hoping that that helps to create the illusion that, um, of what I'm trying to convince you as, and that is a tree without any leaves on it. All right, and change it up, change the temperature up a little bit more. So all of these little things, what I've got over here now is I'm going to throw in some telephone poles over here, and I've got some wires going on, and we'll try to c clean this up. I don't know how, f what, what are we dealing with for time? Two, two. Oh, we got two, two, we got, good, I got a little, way, a little bit of time here. Um, Excuse me, I have a question about the foreground where you have the blue and the purple. Yep, all this stuff. Coming down. That's not part of the picture. That's kind of, or is that, will that be part of it? That's like sort of a palette. Done. I'm not even going to touch that. Oh. That's going to, that, I know, but that's, uh, it's, I'm, I may play around with getting a little bit more deeper here and there, but it's just part of the whole palette. It's just part of the whole thing that's going to go on. And I will leave that. Yeah, I will. Uh, it may not look right to you because it's going it vertically. I wondered if it was a fence or something. What? No. It can be made into a fence, I guess. I never thought about that. But I'm just, I just allowed it to go wherever it wanted to go. What I will do is, for instance, we, what, we, what, what I can do and should do and would do normally is, once this is created, come over here and sort of, I, well, I'm, I don't want to do, hang on for a second. I'm ahead of myself. But essentially, you've got, a, you've got some stuff that's going on back here. So I can put, I can put a roadway sort of going up into that area as an example to help that along. I, I, so I'd come in here and I'd say, okay, let's, let's start to look at this probably as a way to get into these houses back here and maybe do the same thing, maybe doing the same thing coming this way. If I, if I ruin the painting, Jeffold. <laughs> No, but just, I mean, this is, again, it's a process. So, you know, I'd come in here and say, okay, let's, maybe this is a lake, or maybe this is a, a, a who knows, a driveway, a riverway, frozen ice. I don't really know. I don't really care. I just only care about the fact that it's, you know, it's part of the, old, the overall feel of the, of, the, of the painting. Why do you do it all vertically? I don't, necessarily. I just happen to do it this time over. I, Whatever happens up here, uh, a lot of time. I mean, you'll see a lot of vertical stuff that I work with, but I would, I could do it um, horizontally as well. It doesn't make any difference. If I were doing this whole sky horizontally, I would have started up here with a blue, and I would have graded it down so that it was warm, maybe cooler at the top and warmer at the bottom. Yeah, I, it's just, it's part of the palette of this tile of painting that I, I work with. Nothing more. It's not that I do it all the time. Like I said, I'm still, I'm still in the process of learning. We all learn. I mean, you learn every day. So I'm still in the process of experimenting with things, to do things different ways. Um, and I think that's good for all of us, because if you don't break out your own pattern, if you don't force yourself to get out where you've never been before, you never learn. And the hardest part is to do that here with everybody. <laughs> you know, you want to do that in a safe space. <laughs> We're, we're, uh, but you know, it's, it, it really is just part of the painting and, and it'll work out fine. It's just, you know, once I get this thing finished up, uh, I want. What I tend to do is make things too dark and then I'm like, oh my God, and I take water and it's, try to get rid of it. Which, uh, it's know. dangerous. I, I was going there with, I want, this is, this all should have been left lighter. You're right. It, it, we all do it. And, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a problem that we all run into because. I want to, I'm looking at trying to differentiate what happens back here to what happens back there. So I'm saying, well, I need to force a little bit of dark back there to make that light pop out. Well, probably I shouldn't have even bothered with it. Probably should have just left it alone. Actually, probably the way I should have handled it is just made it a little warmer, you know, and just go in here with a little bit of, you know, just, just come down with something like this. 
you know, and just, just sort of brightened it up a bit more, and that would have been, that's enough, that's enough to bring it around, and I, couldn't, and I could have left this lighter. And then maybe I'll pull out, and maybe probably what I'll do is just go back in here, which is nice, and pull, just go back and say, okay, I want a little bit of light. I want to, let me just bring this back. Let me just take a little water out of here. Take a little color out of here. Look again what I did, ladies and gentlemen. My God. Well, it's a demo, so it's not a problem. Um, OK, so, so why I do things, God knows. I have no idea. I look, I say, hey, let's try this, let's do this. And uh, hopefully, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you move on to other things. It's, it's, I've always done that. I do, however, and I will, I think this is dark enough. Now see, I, this here is dark enough, so I don't want to use water, I want to use pigment. Because if I use water, what's going to happen is gonna, it's going to get to the point where it's going to dry out. I mean, it's going to lighten up a little bit more. So what I want to do here to get those real darks, as I want to mix. I want to mix my paint so that it carries. It literally carries more pigment in here. This. If I if I do this, the paint's not going to go anywhere. All right. So, is that a window? Sure, it's a window. It's a crooked window, but it's a window. It's more character. You know, there's nothing more boring than a, than a Gambrel or a, or, a, or a Colonial that's all perfect lines and everything else. That's why they like, you know, doing old barns are great because you can break the backs, you can sway them, you can sort of make the doors fall off. They're just a lot more fun to do. Well, this was a very rigid straight house in the photograph, very bland and so forth. And I just, you know, it, breaking up the shadow makes it a little bit more interesting for me. So dark. So we're back to, let's get the, some darks in here because that's where we, we need to start going into getting to build this up. Do you see um, a horizon line or a horizon anywhere in the? Oh, eye level, whatever your eye level is. So if I got a little guy that's sitting over here, yeah, I mean, my horizon line right now Anything above this area here, I would be looking up under. If I'd, I'd be looking up under here, but I'd look, be looking down on this area here. So my horizon is somewhere in this area when I, as I go okay, across. Well, in, the, in the background where you have a telephone pole, yeah. I think, is the bottom of that what you see as the horizon line? No, the horizon line is down in this area yeah. here, okay. down in here. This would just be extended. That's an aesthetic, uh, what do you want, license. It just because I wanted some nuances in back there, so I'll throw some of those things in there just to give it a little bit of character. But no, the horizon line should be somewhere in this area, right about, right about here. Okay. Now, if I'm looking down, if I'm up on a hill, looking down on this, that's a little different. You know, it depends on where I am in perspective. But generally, this is where wherever I'm looking is my horizon line, wherever my eyes are. If, I, if you're dealing with a guy that's a foot taller than me, he's going to have a different horizon line that, than I will because it's always at your eye level. So if I were going to be putting a bunch of people in here, which I can, I, I, maybe I'll drop in a few, uh, what will happen is, is that it would be wherever they're looking at would be their horizon. That wasn't the intent with this. This, is just a, this to me was just a matter of bringing a bunch of shapes together to try to get it to look like uh, look like something. Now, I'm doing the same thing. So, so a little darker here. A little darker here. So you use that little stick when you want to make sure not to smudge. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep my, I have done, I've destroyed, I've done demos where I've just gone and wiped my entire hand, my entire side in this stuff. And, you know, then you got to go back and you got to correct it. And so it's just a mall stick for me. To be honest with you, normally I, I, I usually paint here. I, I, I'll paint, I'll do demos and I usually I'm doing it on an easel like this. 
So uh, they were good enough, New England was good enough to be able to put the mirror up. So it works out. And if I'm painting at home, if I'm painting in my studio, usually my bench is about this level here. So I have mall sticks and, st and stuff that I have, bridges, yeah. Well, it's an oil mall. Use it when you're painting oils. I usually put it against there so I'm, I'm, if I'm doing oil work, uh, I don't have to worry about picking up oil in my hands and stuff like that. Especially small detailed work when you're playing around. But I found that it's just as good. Now, I don't, I don't have the control. You know, I want to get down here and just do some real tight. But I'm going to put my hand in this thing. And if I do that, yeah, I have no chance of coming, bringing it back. None whatsoever. So, so it's just now it's a, it's a matter of really these real strong darks. All right, to bring this out and, and this hope. Let's see if this is dry enough. Okay, so uh, so here, so I'd do something like here's the thing that I'd be doing with this stuff. I'd come in here with some real dark. All right, some some of this stuff. Yeah, some of this. All right, let it skip. Let it go where it wants to go. And this is, becomes very interesting. It helps the painting along. It helps bring the, this whole thing together. The telephone pole that we were talking about. Whoops. Uh-oh. Got a little carried away with it. Hang on. All right, so if that's my telephone pole and I gotta kill, I gotta kill something here because I got a big blob on that thing that I don't, I don't necessarily want there. All right, so that's my basic pole. I'll darken that up certain areas, make it. And then what I'm gonna do is put some wires in to, to make this happen. But the telephone pole will do the same thing. You'd have some of it would be dark Right? And some of it would be a little lighter. Why not? And then you'd have wire in there, so the wire would be the telephone lines, for instance. Do you always stand when you paint? I've never sat, ever. Uh, even at home. Actually, when I think about it, I got a chair, I got a bench that's right behind me. I usually stand. I, I don't know how to. How do you the paint? table at which you work, is it a great deal higher than that? Right there, that's it. This height? This height. Yeah. Yeah, there's not, not this height. No, no. Exactly. It, it's up, it's here. No. Not that height. Um, if you're sitting, it wouldn't be as fluid, right? I, I wouldn't have the, fr if I'm sitting, I'm more con it's more controlled. Now, I've done a book illustrations and stuff like that. Like, I've, I've done, I just get through my, this third children's book that I just did. And those are a little different and I'm sitting down and I'm, I'm working in a different, you know, a different environment. But in general, I stand when I paint. I stand when I paint. I've never sat at a demo. I mean, I, and I usually am working. I don't have the luxury of this. So you go to a small art society and they, they have nothing, easels. So I had to learn to paint vertically. And that's fun because you talk about gravitational pull. I mean, you know, you put the water in and everything sort of just pages and drips down. That's actually, you want to know who asked me about this vertical stuff? That's where I first started to do it because I lost a lot of paint. It just kept, it just kept running down. I said, you know, it doesn't look bad. Wow, that's terrific. It was that accident that got me into doing this sort of all, all this vertical stuff. Is, if you really want to know the truth, that's when where you're it. you're working at the height of the table in, in your studio, do you still crop it? I don't have to. It's already in an angle. I, I have a, just a, because I've worked commercially in the industry for years on a drawing board. So I got a big six foot drawing board, you know, and I've got my lamps and lights on it and so forth. And it's only in that studio, I'll do that, I'll actually paint oils that way, by the way, too. Because over at my, I mean, I, I usually do this stuff out of my house, watercolors. Can't do oils in the house because my wife wanted, which should shoot me. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, it's, you gotta be fair. The stuff gets all, it gets into everything. So I'll usually paint oils in my studio, acrylics in my studio, watercolors out of the house. And uh, it, it just makes life easier to do it that way. Um, so... You don't think that the 
that your paper needs to be on a slant. You can sit. Flat. Oh, I can. No, I, I mean, I could. I, I only put this up because I thought it would make it help. Help me. I don't know. I mean, I can. You know, it doesn't make any difference to me. I could, if I'm doing this, I, I might be able to just go ahead and do the same thing. It's a good point. Let's try it and see. You can't see the whole thing. Oh, uh, well, 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 sorry. <laughs> no, no, that, 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 that's okay. I don't. I'm just. I just but wanted. Your drawing board is probably at a, at a slight slant. What? My drawing board is always at a slant. I, my, my drawing board is flat. Is never. I've never been. It's not like a, going to a kitchen table. My drawing board is always at a slant, no matter what I've done. Tilt the bottom of the mirror towards. Tilt the yeah. push the mirror up. There we go. Okay. More. Perfect. Good. There. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. No, so seriously, all right. We're good. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, so, so let's let me just run something in here. So, if this is my telephone pole, and I'd have these cross braces, I'd have my wire coming down. And maybe going off somewhere this way. And maybe it's coming down to the house and it's hanging on a something over here. And I don't like that you need more than one because one's just not worth doing. So you've got a couple of those things going on there. And now we're just going to go back again, going back to getting it to the point where you're going to finish it. Um, we're going back into doing this stuff. Clabbered. Nice and thick. Same way with this stuff up here. And I think, you know, rather than the other thing I've always, I, the other thing I used to do is I used to put everyone in. And there's no need for it. You know, it's overwork. It's like putting every window in every if you, I mean, painting a Boston scene, if I had to put in every window, you'd, it would just, it loses something after a while. So just enough, I, I'm, it's just enough to tell a story. That's my story. It's a clabbered building. That's fine. And this one here, instead of being, this is, well, well, this is just siding. And this is what makes this stuff, you know, you, you had a basic shape, but once I start to put the little linear stuff in there, it helps to bring everything together. It helps to bring it all around. All right, so I got this stuff happening. And maybe I'm going to throw some other color, but just, you know, just paging in some of the, paging in, painting in some of this real bright red and leaving it, it helps that to bring that out. I make, I'm going to actually throw some real major blue back here too. By the way, um. I'm, I'm still <clears throat> searching for the horizon line there. The uh, little orange building right there where you're touching, right there, right. looks to me like that's about where the horizon line is. But then beyond that, it looks like we're looking up a slope towards the. Uh, Telephone. I'll tell you what. I had a building in here. This is this is actually it was actually the roof of a building, right here. This was the roof of a was the roof of a big building. You can't see that. I knew it was there. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, it was a snowy slope. yeah, no, but, but well, it's a good point. All right, so <laughs> great point. All right, so let's say it's a snowy slope. Then your horizon line is down here, and if I actually went back here, let's let's yeah, we'll try it. What, what do we got to lose? You know, what, you lose the painting, you lose the painting. All right, so here, let's do this. That's interesting. So we'll put back over here, and we'll make this all your snowy slope. I don't know. That, let's, let's put something back here to make it look that way, I guess. Worst thing that can happen is, is that it will throw the painting away. Well, no, I'm serious. I'm not, I mean, you know, it's a demo. It's all about the process. So if this helps you, uh, well, we can kill that as a, as a uh, we don't need to necessarily, I want that tree in front of the background, but if that helps to get that, I don't know if it does it. If not, I'll pull that back out. We can also do this and come back and get rid of it. 
But I, I don't know, it's just, uh, this is where your horizon line is, so back down here. And you're right, you're going up, you, you would be going up, you know, you're looking back here. Yeah. So you would be going up as you go back. Yeah. So that's just a matter of, that becomes a matter of taking something, Now, my telephone pole is not going to work in this situation, but, you know, it's okay. You know, you've got these swings that are going to go on. Right. So you've got, it's just loosely done. And, I mean, I, I can't see it from your point of view, but I don't know what's going on back here now anymore, but hopefully that'll get your horizon line back where you wanted it. That's also a roof of a house over here, which is not working out. Um, this here, this area here. And, bec and because that's coming down, you got this real dark over here. That might help, but I'm not sure. I don't, I gotta play around with that stuff. That's the, see, that's the kind of stuff that I would just walk away from and then come back later and just work out. Do you want, when do you know that it's done? Uh, it was done a while ago. I've been over, I've been over, I mean, and what I'm playing with now is just, oh, I'm overworking it, but that, because I would not normally have done that. When it's done, well, when you know it's done is that, you know, you really, again, I have to, in order for me to know it's done, I walk away, have a cup of coffee, come back a half an hour later. And then when I take a look at it, I can see it fresh. And I, I, I will say, okay, gee whiz, it's about 95% there. It just needs a little bit more detail work. And I can get, this I can get the, these brushes in here, this fine line brush, you know, these script brushes. And I can go back in and say, okay, I need to put a little bit of something here, something there, something here and bring it all about. I can't know what's done right now. I have no idea where this painting is at this point in time, except that I know that it's about 75% where it should be, maybe. You know? But I've also started to overwork it and play around with it, and, and, and it, it becomes a, it becomes a... Is it ever a lost cause? Oh, God. Are you, are you, do you paint? <laughs> I mean, for every one great painting that you do, how many bad paintings do you do? <laughs> yeah, of course it is. And, and quite frankly, uh, this could be a lost cause or it could be pulled out to be a real fine painting. I can't tell though from here. I can't tell as I'm talking to you and working with this stuff where this is right now. Because again, you know, I'll come back and I'll say, hey, who said this? This vertical stuff is too vertical and it's just not working. So. Let's pull some, let's go back in here and soften this up a little bit and bring some of this nice water. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. Or I'll go back in and say it needs a little bit of dark stuff, a little bit more. It's hard to say. What's interesting is that those vertical blue spots look like artistic license. On the, to the right, where you, to the right, below the orange buildings, You've got a, an ice pond. Okay. So that that's fun. There's Not, something represent, representational, yeah. and there's something purely impressionistic. Actually, to be honest with you, what's wonderful about this type of painting is what you just said, because this could be an ice pond. Why not? It is. It is if you believe it is. And that's the whole process about staying loose. Is that you have? The, it's you that's looking at this that's creating the painting. It's not me. I'm just, I'm, I'm just manipulating color and value and, and temperature in terms of shapes because when you really look at it close, it's, it's no different than anything else that's, uh, that's, that's loosely done or, or abstractly done. I mean, this is abstract realism is what it really is. It's, you know, you're using realistic subjects, but you're doing it in an abstract way to bring about the general feel of the painting. And that's what it's all about for me. It's temperature, value, and composition, very important. I will tell you right now, without composition, I don't care how good your painting is, if it doesn't compose well, and you're not going, I mean, I would not want this thing to be, have a center of attention right here. 
This is not, I, normally what I would do is I would, if, I, if that were the case, I would force the issue. I would force the issue by coming in here and saying, okay, let's put, let's put a figure, and I'm just gonna throw in here, and we'll do it this way. Let's put a, a, a figure in here, walking down the, in the figure is just gonna be a blob, by the way. It's not gonna be anything else. It's just gonna be here. Let's, it's that, that, and, and, and the legs, all right? And, if I needed you to look down in this direction, I would put something very strong in this area for you to force your eye down there. And that may need it. It may need it. You may need to see a figure this size to compare the size of what's happening back here. Every one of the paint, usually I'll put figures in all my stuff. I'll always work with a couple of figures in a painting. Because other than that, I mean, the painting is, is uh, sterile without people. It's, people are part of the process of what we're all looking at, whether, they're, whether this is a snowy community and they're skiing down the road because there's too, many, too much snow and they really don't have a path to go in, or, or whether or not they're shoveling, whatever, you know, whether they're in a barn and they're talking, milling around. The, uh, the frustrating part that I'm having here is this, this stuff here, because it, it needs to be enhanced. It needs to be, I need to go back in here and bring this about, which I don't have time to do, but bring this all about this, this stuff here, this getting this in, getting these in so that they're more convincing. Bring about, bring about the painting so that it, it, it's more realistic. Taking the wire, whoops, that's too thick, shucks. Take, taking, taking this uh, real thin wire down here and making it come down the pole and, you know, if this is a pond, getting that edge in the pond a little bit more. Um, Again, process of painting is a matter, it's just for me, it's, it's just the steps that I'm taking to achieve the final goal. This is all too, still too light. I'd want to come in here and make this a little bit more, a little bit more, a little darker, you know, and more characteristic of texture. So it's, it's, it's just where do you want to go, where do you want to take the painting and what kind of illusion you want your audience to look at. Because that's what I, I mean, this is nothing more than entertainment. It's, a, you know, David Copperfield gets up there and does magic stuff. I mean, we paint, you know, and, and the whole idea is, is that it's all about entertaining the audience. So if it entertains you and you're, it's interesting, th we're not talking about perfect award-winning paintings. We're talking about sort of just interesting stuff that people can enjoy and look at and have fun with and play with. And, and just be enraptured with. Because I want you to stay here. I don't want you off. You know, nothing, nothing's worse than, see this thing here that's happening over here? To bring you off the page to another painting. So I would, in order to get you back, I would start to build, build real dark stuff to bring you back in here. But that's a process. That's, that's just the, you know, you, that's the process of, of going from the first step where you start to do this and you start copying your work to becoming an artist, to becoming fresh, to becoming free when you paint. So anyway, that's, that's my, I guess we gotta wrap this thing up a little bit. Oop. Oh, sure, that, we gotta do that for the camera. <laughs> all right. And, and that's, you know, it's, and, and the other process is it's all about the cleanup because God knows you, if you take a look at my studio, I mean, my floor, the floors are horrible, the walls are horrible. I do a lot of this, there's a lot of stuff because I tend to do, I tend to pick up a brush and do this and do this. You're laughing, but that's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. No, that's how I get rid of the water on the brush. So uh, they were nice enough. I got to clean the floors after you guys leave. Can you hold up your palette and let us see? What oh, absolutely, sure. Yeah. Okay. Basically, let's start out with. Oh, I, do I have to wrap this up real quick? Or? You were fine. Okay. You know, you, you're still entertaining these people. Uh, yeah. I have, my normal, my base palette is a warm and a cool of a red, a warm and a cool of a blue, and a warm and a cool of a, ye a yellow. That's the base. Now, we all understand what warm, like, we can do light and dark to make it easier, but essentially it's, you know, it's always in comparison to another color. But basically, if I'm having two reds, I want one more to the purple side and one more to, so, with the orange side. So you've got a warmer red and a, and a cooler red. Same thing with yellow, same thing with, with uh, blues. Then... I work with a few browns. Now, I got a lot of colors in here that I don't use, quite frankly. 
but I put them on here so that I would be impressive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I usually, no, honestly, I, I usually work with my, I, I work with these three blues, which are cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and ultramarine blue. That's my blues. That's my blue palette. I will use lavender, which I love, just as an enhancement. Just to, just to go in here, for instance, I'll take a little lavender because it's a great color, and I'll come in here and I'll do this. All right? And it creates a nice general vibrance to the piece. And it gives me, see this? I don't know if you can see it up there because the camera's working it, but you've got, you got this sort of lavenderish stuff that's going to fade down into the other, and it helps to bring it out. And I'll use Indian yellow or Naples yellow, either one, it doesn't make any difference, to also do the same thing. I can go back in here and pick up a little of this stuff and come back and do, and do stuff with it. But generally, it's those, these three blues, these two reds, which, which is alizarin crimson and cadmium red, or bright red, either one. And in, in, in my oranges and yellows, I'll, I'll use my, generally my yellows are New Gamboge and either a cadmium yellow or something like that, or some other yellow compared to it. I always use yellow ochre because I keep, I like the earth tones. As a matter of fact, for years I just painted with earth tones, quite frankly, because <laughs> I, I when I, was, when I first started to paint, I was deathly afraid of color. Uh, death, deathly afraid of color. Until I, be, I started working with a colorist. I used to do a lot of stained glass work. And I learned color by doing stained glass. But I would only paint monochromatically, or draw monochromatically, and then paint monochromatically, literally. So it was, it's a learning process. It's a step-by-step a -step situation, and the more people you paint with, that's what I found, painting with, I mean, I, Wendy's sitting back there, I, we paint in a group every Tuesday, and it's just, people help each other, they, they, we work with each other. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to do. This is a, a, you know, I mean, it's a demo, it's gonna get torn out, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna probably toss this at some point, but if I can't really bring it around, we'll see what happens. Is the lavender a mixed color or something you have Always. Color? I always, yeah, I, I mix green. I don't usually, I, greens are not in my palette. Um, I mix them. I mix lavenders. I mix purples. I mix, every, as a matter of fact, even though with my blues, the blues are never out of, I never generally use, other than what you saw me do right here, which was pick up cerulean blue and just, just page some in. Everything granulates together. I mix every color. There's no such thing as color pure from the tube except for accent colors, a cadmium red. And this is one of the reasons why watercolor will dissipate real fast. So I'll put down a bright red, and it'll turn a bright brown red at some point because it's water and it's gonna dissipate. So if I really, really, really want a very bright color, I'll use a gouache color to get that in. And I will probably go back and I would probably pull some of this out with a little bit of white gouache to bring some of this out a little bit more. So to bring this to a real painting, there'd be a little bit more work in it, but this gets you to the point where you understand my process and how I get to the results that are in, that are in all of those pieces that are back in the, my portfolio back there. Can you talk about the uh, brush that you use to paint the trees with? Yeah, it, are you talking about the thin, the long script brush, or are you talking about the... That one. I, yeah, yeah, my trunk brush. Uh, let me tell you, it's, it, again, I use rounds and I use flats. I don't use brights. I don't use um, fan brushes. I don't use anything. As a matter of fact, I use a very little amount of brush. What happened is, is that I got uh, this brush I love. These brushes, this whole series of brushes are synthetic, by the way. They're manufactured by a company up in upstate New York. They sent me a whole series of brushes in their line for me to test, to play with. And I promised them that I would use it here. And I love it. It's, it, it this, this series, this whole, this is, it's called their uh, Black Gold series. Um, they're beautifully, they're the best synthetic brushes that I've used, bar none. This is the uh, name? Dynasty. Um, and, and, and I used a lot of synthetic brushes. But my real brushes, the brushes that I love the most, the brushes that have been with me the longest, these brushes. These are Strathmore Klonsky Sable brushes. They are not on the market anymore. 
They're a beautiful brush. This thing is, I can't tell you how old this brush is, and it still holds the finest points. And, and the other brushes that I use, while I have you here, if you want to know about the brushes, is that I was given a brush. I was given a brush. Yeah, see, these are, I mean, here's a Klonsky Sable brush. Look, it's, it's, but once you wet it, can I do that? No, I, I, I see, I mean, it's a marvelous. Now, if you're using something like this, you need that point to spring back. You need the brush to spring back. That's one thing. This brush will never spring back. It's a squirrel brush. Floppy, right? But it's great for doing certain things. When you're laying down, a br when, you, when you're taking a brush and you're moving it from the side, you're coming across it. Marvelous brush for that kind of stuff. That's what this is. It's a squirrel brush. It's a script brush or a rigger. Do you know, you know the difference between the two? My, my, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm rigatony at gmail.com. Rigger, R-I-G-G-E-R, Tony, my name. But that's, that comes from that. A rigger, or a script, a rigger. That's a New England. I guess it's a rigger, you know. Um, but they're nice, fine brushes that, are, that I'm able to do all of this real fine stuff with because you can lay the thing, you can lay the thing down. Line brush? Line brush, yeah. Script, script brush, line brush, same thing. But here's what I like about it. You can, you can go back over here and you can pick up paint. I mean, look at this. You can take this thing here and you can drag this flat. You can drag it flat. And it's gorgeous. It just absolutely makes a beautiful, thin line. Take a little water, and as I said, I don't usually, usually what I'll do is I'll take a little water and I'll pull out the color from whatever I've just done and come up with this stuff. These are great brushes to work with, but again, you're going back to consistency of water to pigment, the proper amount to go over here, because all we're dealing with is a whole bunch of sponges that are in my hand. And credit cards, as I said before, I got them in there, I keep them in there, I didn't pull them out. Um, they're marvelous for doing straight line work. Guys got, anybody over here do any drywall work? Go down and get buy some dry, you wanna do buildings real quick? Go down and buy some drywall tape. The mesh stuff. Put it down, it's got a natural stickiness to it. I mean, I'm not talking about buildings that are out front, but the stuff that's on the background that you need to get 14 million windows in real quick. You put it down there and just sort of page it down and you paint it and let it dry and pick it up and it, you know, you got, your building is done. I have a student of mine, I got, I got a student of mine that brought, came in the other day because I, I told him about this process and she went out and bought it and she had, she taped the whole damn painting and she's got all of this stuff and she holds this thing up to me and she says, what do you think? Is this good for a show? Now, she did nothing but all she did is just put tape down and just, you know, just <laughs> let it dry. So there was no painting on her part, it was all done. I said, no, Posty, you can't use that for a show. That's not where you want to go. It's not going to work. Okay? Tools, that's all they are. The tools to use to help you to get to the point where you want to get. You do that for the background. Yeah, I would never do it. Yeah, exactly. And it was just, look, I mean, I've built an, I've built an entire city because I've, I'll do cityscapes but out of, with credit cards. <laughs> Literally, just, you know, you, I, once I get this, see this, all this background, get that in there to the building and just because I can control a credit card if I want a straight line a lot better than I can. And, and you know, it's just using the edge of the credit card or scraping. You the paint on the credit card as opposed to using it as a ruler? Just, no, I don't know, I got, I don't even know where it is here. It's in here somewhere. They won't let you go to <laughs> No, I don't, I don't want to. Um, I don't know. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what. Not even forget a credit card. Here, the back. Here, tubes of paint. You guys have tubes of paint? Right here. Look. Tubes of paint. You can do the same thing with a tube of paint by taking and putting. You don't need a credit card. I just happen to say you can use the back of a tube of paint to do it the same way. So if you're doing this and you're building a building. You can scrape it, you know, you can do this sort of nice scrapey stuff that goes on to give you that in and out look of windows that are back there. Is that, and then it's just, it, yeah. how, many times, how many times have I built people doing this? <laughs> What's the body? Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, no, no, I'll just do it up here. <laughs> yeah, no, no. 
uh, look. Okay, here's the body of the person. Here's the body of the person. Oh, oh, it's not dark enough, but. You know, the body of the person. Your thumb. You can do grapes that way. You can do, I mean, if you use the tools that God gave us, <laughs> it's amazing what you can do. You know? But yeah, synthetic brushes. All right, head, feet. Done. Hey, you want the body? You're struggling a little bit more. All right, All right here. There's my, so there's the feet. And the ground is right here. You know, so I'd put that guy back here with a couple of other people, and if you want to build a whole series of people, you could put one behind the other. As long as you keep the heads all the same, we're all in good shape, so you can start building up a lot of people. You can put 27 people in the painting, and all you need to really do is build the first one correctly, accurately, and everything else is, you know, one's behind the other, so who cares? Do the entire scene of people going into Fenway Park that way, you know, just put one person. Anyway, that's... Uh, I'll tell you one problem that I, that I often have. I'm sorry. Go ahead. One, one problem that I have that I wanted to ask you about is when I'm doing a wash, a continuous wash, yeah. I always run out of the paint. No. And I've got to mix it again. And it, You're trying to get it, a roller it, No, 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 He's no. You're trying no. to get the roller and do yeah. the whole painting. <laughs> wet the paper, wet the whole damn thing first. Don't, you know what? Wet, if you want to wash from here to here, graded wash, soak the paper. Soak it. Soak the paper. Pick up a flat brush, pigment, and just... It, the, the, the water will draw down. It'll, auto, it'll do it automatically. If you don't force it, it'll do it. Yeah, you're right. It'll do it. Just wet the paper. And if you and don't it, like the angle, tilt it. Yeah, and, 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 that's, and quite frankly, and if I was painting this way, all of that would run down automatically and I'd have a beautiful rainstorm. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hope you got something out of it.